Come on, grow! <sighs> Imagine how much we could accomplish together if you were just an inch bigger. <sighs> I wonder if they've got any medication for this sort of thing. I know the pain. Wanting to try a cool looking dive watch only for your tiny wrist to let you down. Small dive watches are as hard to come by as a realistic Fast and Furious movie. There's always room for fan. There are so many pieces that I love the look of, but can't realistically wear due to the obvious size disparity. Unfortunately, lots of existing videos on this subject feature predominantly luxury watches that retail for thousands. My wife wouldn't be too happy if I spend that on a wristwatch. So I figured I'd hunt down some of the few smaller dive watches that most of us can reasonably afford. I've narrowed it down to pieces that are currently readily available for around £400 or less, so you've got half a chance of grabbing one if you find this video later down the line. Some of these watches were provided for review. For details and for affiliate links to all the watches I'm mentioning in this video, you can check the video description. First up, let's run through a few that I've mentioned on the channel before, and then we'll take a look at some fresh offerings that might be of interest. Two of the very smallest affordable divers take very different design approaches. The unisex Invicta Pro Diver 92040B is far from the most original watch on this list, with a look stripped straight from the Rolex Submariner. Nevertheless, it's a dream for slim wrists, with a small diameter of just 37.5mm, meaning it'll likely fit even the thinnest of you out there. Upsides include the fairly good case finishing, the surprisingly low price, and the decent bracelet. I'm not a fan of the side engraving, and the watch does only utilize a quartz movement, but for around $50 in the US, it's great value nonetheless. It's priced higher in the UK, though we do tend to pay more for watches in general. This is also the thinnest watch on the main list at just 11.2 millimeters, which is pretty much unheard of for a dive watch. And surprisingly, this doesn't come at the cost of aquatic performance, with this Invicta still boasting a 200 meter water resistance rating. If you're looking for something similarly sized, but more creative, it's hard to look past the Vostok Amphibia. There is a seemingly infinite pool of these crazy Russian watches in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This turquoise scuba dude variant is probably the most popular that utilizes the 39.8mm 420 case shape. No joke, that's genuinely the case designation. Naming schemes aside, this case variant is the smallest they offer, with a stubby lug to lug length that makes it wear much smaller than the diameter suggests. Even the thickness is misleading as it incorporates the domed crystal, resulting in an overall experience closer to that of a 37mm watch. You're not just limited to this one either, there's a range of cosmetic variants that utilize the same case as well. It is to be noted that the cosmetic quality control of these units is shaky, and the steel finishing throughout is incredibly basic. Vostok prioritizes water resistance above all else, with the legendary reputation for exceeding their rated designations, sometimes well over 50 bar. Surprisingly, I've also seen many commenters praise the accuracy of the automatic movement fitted in these amphibias. Obviously, your mileage may vary, but an automatic movement of any type is decent for a watch at this price point. It may also be worth considering the 120 case variant offerings, as the advertised 41mm width actually includes the crown guards, so its wrist presence is likely comparable to the 420 case shape. Maybe a touch bigger, because that lug to lug does seem a little bit longer. For something more upmarket, the modestly sized main Hudson that I reviewed back in March should be on your radar. Topping out the price range for this video, it is more expensive than some of the alternatives. However, it more than justifies the higher cost. Not only is the case finishing some of the best I've reviewed on this channel, but the dial is very handsome and looks really classy on the wrist. What's more, it has great dimensions for smaller wrists, with a diameter bang on 38mm and a compact to lug to lug of 45 and a half. That video is somewhat dated when it comes to the thickness of this Hudson. They've since changed the movement from an STP111 to the comparable but slightly slimmer Ronda R150 and have made the case thinner as a result. If you're willing to spend that bit extra, it's a great watch, and it's one I've kept in my collection since the review, as the rather minimalist style suits my wardrobe perfectly. Now let's get onto some fresh offerings that you won't have seen before on Ben's Watch Club. Out of all the dive watch homages out there, one of those I quite like is the San Martin or San Martin SN004G. Unlike many supposed homage pieces, it doesn't strip its design from current luxury watch models, and instead emulates a much older Rolex design from the 1950s. These models are unobtainable and new condition, so I'm happy to recommend this one, as it doesn't just feel like a lazy money grab. In fact, in many ways, the SN004G offers excellent value. 
For below £200, the level of finishing puts most larger brands to shame, with well-executed brushing and precise polishing across the steel case and bracelet. It also has a stacked spec sheet, including a sapphire crystal, solid link bracelet, 200 meters of water resistance, and a Seiko automatic movement. I briefly mentioned this watch in my Invicta 1953 review, suggesting that the San Martin could pose as a better retro-inspired diver due to its smaller size, darker toned loom, and domed crystal. Having now tried the piece, I can thankfully say that that prediction was correct. While the gilded dial is nothing spectacular, it certainly looks more like a 50s watch than the Invicta, and I've been particularly impressed with the bezel action and alignment. The 38.5mm width is the key factor though. It makes the piece wear in a rather vintage manner, incidentally making it a good fit for small wrists. The only real downside is that the bracelet, while well built and housing solid links throughout, also houses protruding end links that effectively increase the lug to lug length. While curved and not too obstructive, an alternative bracelet could be the way to go if you're aiming for the smallest possible diver. Nevertheless, if I can pull it off on my 15.5cm wrist, I imagine most of you watching this video can too. A piece I've been split on but felt compelled to include anyway is the Luminox Sea Turtle. To be straight up, at the retail price, I'm not sure it's particularly good value when compared to rival offerings. For around £200, this XS0301L only offers a mineral crystal, quartz movement, 100 meters of water resistance, and isn't even constructed of metal. Even the tritium radioluminescence that they market so heavily was a bit of a letdown. It's not nearly as bright as in the stock images, and is barely visible unless under bright UV light. I'd go so far as to suggest it's somewhat of a gimmick. Perhaps other tritium tubes do a better job than those fitted here. That being said, this Luminox does offer a totally different approach to most others. Most notably, it has a polycarbonate case based on a material that they've branded Carbonex. It appears to be a type of carbon fiber reinforced polymer that initially feels a lot like typical resin that you might find in cheaper watches. Luminox is quite tight-lipped about its production though, and it has some niche properties that might make it a viable choice for your needs. First up, the watch is incredibly lightweight. True, it doesn't give you a sense of weighty quality, but it is extremely comfortable on wrist. Probably the best of the bunch in this video. Additionally, this material is harder and much more scratch and scuff resistant than any of the regular plastic watches that I've covered before. Even the best steel watches accrue a substantial amount of scratches over time, whereas I bet this will stand up slightly better in the long run, especially with the dark color scheme. My ultimate conclusion is that this watch might be worth a pickup if you can find it for the right price. I love the look of this unisex 39mm model, and it is a great fit for my skinny wrist too. Not to mention it's Swiss made if that bothers you, and it does have good movement alignment. It's one of those watches that I just find myself wanting to pick up and wear for some reason. However, I can't say I'd be willing to spend more than about £100 on it without an appropriate specification upgrade. A timepiece that narrowly squeezes its way onto this list is the often overlooked Seiko Mini Turtle. The smaller brother of the popular Turtle, this diminutive piece can now be found for similar prices to the lesser spec and now discontinued SKX series. When looking at the 42mm diameter on paper, it's hard to picture this model on a slimmer wrist. However, you'd be missing the whole story. You see, it's the incredibly short 43mm lug to lug length that gives the Mini Turtle its distinctive rounded profile and surprising wearability. Sure, it looks notably wider than many of the alternatives on this list, and it's the biggest watch here. However, that case doesn't extend past the edges of even my tiny wrist, meaning it should be viable for just about anyone. Part of this is down to the female end links, which conform well to the wrist. Unlike some of the cheaper Seiko divers of days past, this one comes with a solid link 20mm bracelet and a half decent clasp that should suffice for the lifetime of the watch. Inside is the 4R35 movement, which is like a Seiko branded version of the generic NH35, which they also make. It's a reliable option that hacks and hand winds, unlike the venerable 7S26 found in the older budget Seiko 5 series. Outside of the shape, the main pull factors here are the unique marker arrangement, excellent luminescence, and brand prestige. You'll likely get a higher percentage of the £350-ish retail price back should you decide to resell it at some point when compared to the other options on this list. The main downsides here are the disappointing lack of sapphire crystal at this price point, the fiddly pin and collar link system, and Seiko's questionable quality control. I mean, take a look at that bezel. Overall though, if you're looking for the largest looking diver that your skinny wrist can get away with, then the Mini Turtle is a popular choice in this category. 
A quick nod also goes to the 38mm Seiko SKX-013, but there are some major caveats. Since the SKX line was discontinued a couple of years back, prices have shot through the roof. Tracking down unused pieces for anywhere near their original RRP is now near impossible thanks to greedy scalpers after a quick buck. For a watch with comparable specs to many £80 Seiko 5 watches, I'd personally avoid overpaying and consider the other options on this list instead. If you must get your hands on one, I'd recommend scouting out the best pre-owned deal you can to avoid disappointment. Alternatively, you could look at the Islander Dive Range by Long Island Watch, which features an upgraded SKX-013 clone at a slight price premium. I can't comment on the build quality because I'm yet to try one, but the general concept seems self-explanatory. While not as distinctive as the Seiko Mini Turtle, and certainly from a less prestigious brand, San Martin nonetheless offers a restrained version of this stocky design in the form of the SN045G. Originally, I never considered this watch as a candidate for this video. The brand had reached out separately, intending to send across some watches for review. And when browsing their catalog, I saw they'd finally released some non-homage models, which didn't rely on the infamous Control c Control v technique. While both watches turned out to be built ridiculously well for the money, I was surprised to discover that it wasn't the 38mm model that fitted me better, but rather the 40.5mm one. Yeah, despite the wider diameter, the lug to lug was significantly shorter, comparable to that on the Seiko Mini Turtle. While a little top heavy, it wears awfully well on slim wrists, and looks much more expensive than the sub £200 retail price would indicate. While I like the quirkiness of the Seiko, as a whole, I think this San Martin is a high quality product, despite lacking the acclaimed name. The action and alignment of the bezel are much better. The case finishing is equally well executed, while the bracelet and clasp are at least two steps above. To cap it off, this one has a lightly domed sapphire crystal and a more defined engraving on the case rear. If I'm honest, this original design does have a dirty secret. I initially thought it looked very Seiko-esque, but struggled to pinpoint it. After some quick Googling, I found the Prospects 1970, and voila, the mystery was solved. Indeed, it didn't take Poirot to work out that the dials are virtually identical outside of the branding, and although the handset is slightly different, the resultant look is virtually the same. So it's not a totally original watch, as they may claim, though ironically, across the three watches I've tried from this brand, the quality control has been better than I've come to expect from Seiko themselves. Many of you may have heard of the Timex Navi Harbor, which is a rather popular and affordable military-style hybrid that comes in a couple of different sizes. Well, I found myself browsing through the rest of the Navi archive range and spotted a rather obscure piece that I thought would make for an interesting addition to this video. Introducing the 38mm Timex Navi Depth. This retro quartz watch is a bit of a cute Timex killer, with a comparable case size, colour scheme and theme. As the name suggests, this model has a striking marine aesthetic with a thick arrow hour hand, dive style bezel and high contrast dial that provides clear legibility. You'll also notice the unusual inner arabics, a throwback to the decompression stop system used before the wrist mounted diving computers became standard. That being said, deep sea diving won't be on the agenda here, as the 100m water resistance rating wouldn't quite cut the mustard. Despite that, it's still great for day-to-day -day usage, double that on the Q-Timex, and unlike some of their low-cost brass offerings, this one is, thankfully, fully stainless steel. The Navi Depth doesn't boast the same spec sheet of some of its rivals, but it does offer a quirky, charming design, which includes a raised, domed mineral crystal and a clickless, bi-directional bezel, not too dissimilar from that on the Vostok. It's also among the slimmest on this list, with a mere 11.6mm thickness, including the domed crystal partly down to the compact quartz movement within. This means it sits flush to the wrist without being as tiny as some ladies' watches. There are a couple of 38mm versions of this available. Right now, the silicon banded ones are about 135, while the fabric strap version is about 20 pounds less. Though, if you've watched this video, you'll know that you'll likely be able to get them at a discounted cost anyway. Is the silicon band worth the price premium? Well, it's honestly far better than I expected. So I would say yes, Though, if your wrist is extremely small like mine, the strap's probably going to be too long. So, if you like the blue dial variant, get the cheaper fabric one. You can always switch out at a later date. The next watch on this list is one I discovered by cheating. I lent on you, my viewers, for some suggestions via a community post and got several interesting responses. One of my favourites was this, the 39mm Odyssey Diver from Richard Legrand, suggested by Dave from Just The Watch. 
I took a look at their site and saw a decent, albeit run-of-the-mill, blank pan lookalike. Still, the specs were very strong, so I emailed them to see if I could try one out. The brand kindly obliged, the Odyssey arrived in the mail, and it quickly proved to be much more than just a well-specced homage. The first thing that struck me was the gorgeous sunburst dial. This model has a deep green tone fading to black at the circumference, which is executed as well as any watch at double its price point. It looks fantastic under almost any lighting condition and legibility is never an issue thanks to the bold numbering and bright markers. This is aided further by the outstanding luminescence provided by a generous application of C3 Superluminova that makes the watch visible in any environment. As you'd expect from any £300 diver, this is made of steel throughout, has a domed sapphire crystal, and houses a 200m water resistance rating. However, it's the finishing touches that help the Odyssey set itself apart from the sea of generic 50 Fathoms clones. The case is not only completed to a great standard, but features narrower shoulders than some of the other options on the market, as well as a chamfered edge at each corner. The bezel is also slimmer, with a minimalist set of markings to match. I'm happy to report that the bezel performance is also excellent, with no back play and flawless alignment, something that the big brands often fail to deliver. By default, this comes fitted on a solid link steel bracelet with a milled clasp and three micro adjustment holes. Within this version is even a high beat Miyota 9000 series movement that's often reserved for much more expensive watches elsewhere. RLG even sent me a non-affiliate discount code which you can use to get even more money off. I'll put it in the description for your convenience. And thinking about it, I think San Martin did the same as well, which I'll also leave below. Honestly, I think this piece is ridiculously good value as it stands. It even comes in a leather pouch with all the tools for adjusting your bracelet and a replacement rubber strap should you prefer to wear that instead. Due to the rather straight lugs, this piece doesn't wear quite as compactly as other options on this list, so it's best suited to those who have a smaller than average wrist rather than a super skinny one. If that sounds like you, then the Odyssey is well worth a plunge. Before we move on to the next watch, it's worth highlighting some of the well-specced diver homages from Chinese wholesale sites such as AliExpress. This includes popular brands such as Pagani Design, Steel Dive, most of the San Martin range, and a few others. The reason I'm not particularly into these pieces is that unlike the RLG, most aren't actually homages in my opinion. You'll notice that the majority of their designs are complete copy and paste jobs of existing luxury watches with a different stamp on the dial. Part of the joy I find in watches comes from the discovery of fresh original designs that offer a unique artistic flair and invoke particular emotions when on wrist. I don't find such a connection with these imitative designs as without a unique twist, they'd just feel a bit soulless, like a shell of a watch without that much substance. Nevertheless, should your opinion differ, they could be worth considering, as many do provide unparalleled specifications for low prices. I've covered a couple of these before and generally been impressed with their physical construction, aside from some notable QC issues. That being said, there are currently very few options below 40mm anyway, so at the time of recording, I wouldn't recommend wasting your time searching. I'll list any I do find in the description below uh, so you can check back in the future. What's that? You can't afford anything on this list? And your wrist is too thin for any of them too? Well, I've crafted up a rather handy, super budget option that may be worth knowing about. Meet the £20 Loris RRX89FX9. While the name is a mouthful, the watch itself is surprisingly acceptable. Okay, at some outlets, it's marketed as a boy's watch, but hear me out. First up, outside of the miniature proportions, you'd never guess it wasn't targeted at adults. It looks like a mini version of the Luminox mentioned earlier, with a matte black colour throughout and only minor white detailing across the dial and bezel. No bright colours or anything immature here. This extends to the simple black two-piece nylon strap that isn't half bad for such a cheap watch. Unexpectedly, this Loris has a 120-click ratcheting bezel and a reasonable 5-bar water resistance rating. At a mere 35.7mm across, this is undoubtedly the smallest watch on this list and would probably fit a stick insect. Of course, this is a dive style watch as opposed to a true diver, but it sure does a meritable job of filling that void with a loomed handset and a simple though rather attractive dial. This Loris isn't going to break any records, but I've spent £20 in many worse ways than this. Their sister company Pulsar also makes a small 36mm SKX lookalike diver, which may be worth considering if you can find it at a competitive price. Here's one you've never heard of or seen before. The 38.5mm Cuda from a new micro brand named Signum Watches. 
This fresh brand was formed by the owner of the more established Stratum Watch Co. And they currently have two diver styles available. The Ciro, I think I'm saying that right, Ciro, Cero, and the Cuda, both of which offer some of the most exotic dial options on the market. For around £300, the Cuda is the more affordable of the two and can also be configured in a smaller case size, making it the better fit for this video. To my surprise, the brand was willing to send me a couple of different versions of this watch, namely the Tiger's Eye and Opal Mosaic, which offer two of the most extreme dial concepts in their collection. As the names suggest, these feature dials constructed from the naturally occurring Tiger's Eye and Opal stones respectively. As a result, each timepiece is unique to the wearer, something you can't say about most watches on the market. Other variants include an interesting heat-treated meteorite and a fully coated C3 superluminescent option for the ultimate low light experience. Outside of that, the watches are constructed to a good standard and have all the specifications you'd expect from a decent micro brand, including 360NL steel construction, a Seiko NH35 movement and 20 bar water resistance. The case design takes a little inspiration from the Seiko SKX with a shielded crown at four o'clock, though it takes a more angular and aggressive approach that incorporates a brushed finish throughout. My main criticism of these pieces lies in the bezels. These units don't have a satisfying click and feel quite floaty with noticeable back play at the moment. It's not the end of the world and they do have integrated loom, which is very cool, though it's clearly still an area for improvement. The rest of the watch, including the bracelet, feels very solid, and overall, it's a striking start for this up-and-coming brand. Earlier in the video, I presented the Navi Depth as a viable Q-Timex alternative with more nautical theming. Surprisingly, there's another 38mm diver that, at first glance, looks much more similar. The Seizen Size the the Seizen the Seizen Skin Diver from Chinese manufacturer Mercure is better spec than the Q and the larger M79 Automatic despite costing far less than either model. Aside from the direction of the brushing, it's clear that the steel case is a ripoff of the Q with an identical shape and proportions. While not original, it does mean that the watch fits thin wrists very well, with no overhang despite the hooded lugs. While the Batman bezel also looks like it's been carried across from the Timex, this one is instead fully ratcheted, with a 72 click action that is more than suitable for a sub 100 pound watch. In several ways, this is an improvement on the watches that inspired it, with a screw down crown and screwed case rear that assist in providing an advertised 200 meters of water resistance. This makes it a true diver, as opposed to simply a diver inspired watch like the Timex's, meaning it'll likely survive whatever aquatic challenges you decide to throw at it. As with the other Chinese brands in this video, whether this one has gone through the official testing to receive this designation is another question entirely. You'll notice that there's no quick access battery hatch here. That's because this 90 pound Seizen has a Seiko SN36 automatic movement inside, comparable in performance to the Miyota 8000 series within the 250 pound Timex M79. And if that wasn't enough, the stock bracelet puts the latter to shame as well, with solid links and a reasonably good clasp that allows for a flexible and comfortable fit. Across the top is K1 Hod Mineral Crystal, which is more scratch resistant than that in both Timex models, though it won't be polishable. Polishable. Is that a word? Luckily, the dial is not a lazy knockoff of an already fairly generic design. This Seizen is rather the opposite, with an experimental look that involves squared markers and a two-tone handset resembling that on some pilot watches. The absence of a GMT hand on a watch with a GMT bezel could be seen as an obvious oversight. However, many larger brands are guilty of that very same shortcoming. While the loom isn't great, the build quality is just as good as the Timex watches, which are produced in China anyway, so this feels like a better value proposition for those lusting after a unique twist on that retro sports aesthetic. My hunt for the watches in this video led me down a very specific rabbit hole, whereby I discovered many pieces that were just a smidge too expensive to make this list. Given the lack of readily available information about smaller dive watches, I figured I'd tag some of my findings on here too for your convenience. It'll save you the dozens of hours I wasted over the last few months. Please do your own research though, as I haven't tried any of these upcoming watches. I just think they can make for interesting avenues to explore. They're also linked below if you wanna take a look. There are a few extra small divers that could be a dream if one has a wrist on the extreme lower end of the size spectrum. While Chunky, the Marathon Medium Search and Rescue Diver, known as the MSAR, is one of the smallest mil-spec pieces to see action on the front lines in recent years. Known for their rugged construction and tritium tubes, these watches are built to endure the harshest of conditions, and their aesthetic is certainly tailored to that. 
these medium sized versions are virtually identical to their larger counterparts and are incidentally less expensive. A rare perk for those of us with a tiny wrist. For a dressier alternative, you could also consider the more affordable and equally Swiss made 36mm Glycine Combat Sub. This 3080M Mini Monster comes in a couple of interesting colours, including a brown variant that you're unlikely to find elsewhere. You weren't expecting to see a Hamilton in this video, were you? No, me neither. Well, during my research, I stumbled upon a 37mm watch called the Khaki Navy Scuba. It's almost like these brands, they just like list random nautical words back to back. Unfortunately, this one offers little on the spec front, with a quartz movement for around 500 pounds. While I wouldn't spend that much on a non-solar quartz, this one is very well sized and could be an option if you're a fan of the brand. Next up, a trio of options that bring those vintage vibes. A popular enthusiast brand, Laurier has seen a good amount of coverage on the YouTube platform in its comparatively short history. Their 39mm Neptune offers a striking gilded look in a vintage inspired package. With a Miyota 9000 series movement for well under £400, it's a tempting proposition for those with a fitting wardrobe. The French Baltic brand has seen similar acclaim since it hit the market off the back of a Kickstarter campaign in 2017. Their 39mm Aquascape, 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 I can't pronounce that one. It's like a modern reincarnation of a vintage 50 fathoms and looks better than it sounds. This one is also very slim for an automatic diver at just 12mm, which includes the domed crystal and it's also got an interesting array of triangular sandwich owl markers at 3, 6 and 9. Also operating out of France, Yamaha have some very unique offerings too, one of which I've already covered on my channel. They recently released the 39mm Navy Graf Marine Nationale, which joins the similarly sized Superman Heritage in their nautical lineup. They offer each model in both quartz and automatic configurations, and while the prices are a bit steep, reviews for this brand appear to be very strong. To cap it off, a couple of more modern looking pieces. Released late last year, the 38mm DS Action Diver from Swiss manufacturer Certina offers a user-friendly 80-hour power reserve in a minute package. Visually, I think this one is a little generic, though it's not an unattractive watch. Something to bear in mind here is that it appears to have solid male end links, which will increase the effective look to look of the watch, making it wear a little larger. Japanese giant Seiko recently released a great looking 38.5mm solar diver of their own, codenamed the SNE57. Thankfully, this one does have a sapphire crystal, and it's also the thinnest diver in this video at just 11.3mm, meaning it should wear flush to the wrist. However, at around £500 at the time of writing, I think it's a steep ask for a watch that doesn't even feature solid end links or any anti-reflective coating. There's also a very similar JDM model named the SBDN019, which is a fraction larger, but equally poorly named. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. My goodness, this video took a long, long time to put together. <laughs>